So this week we've covered lots of different topics in like little pieces around data handling and it's always really important when you've learned something on one day that you go back, you kind of go over that again so it's really going to stick in your long-term memory. So we're going to do that. Now I've got some fantastic news. You know that I'm forever making mistakes. Well, I actually found a mistake that someone else made that featured in yesterday's video. Now maybe I should have checked it, but good that it's not just me, eh? And we're going to see that soon as well. Let's get started. So today's recap's all around finding factors. Um, so let's define what a factor is again. Um, so we, we use this area model to say this is um, three lots of four, or we could see it as uh, four lots of three. Four times three is 12, so the, t the total is 12. So a factor of 12 is four, um, because four goes evenly into 12. I can multiply by four and get to 12. And same with three. Three and four are factors of 12. And then we had a look at examples like this one and we said, right, which are these single digit factors of 90 um, and, and work out how many, which ones are, which ones aren't, how do you know, how do you work it out? And we had examples like this one. We said, well, we can work these ones out with no calculation. Uh, every whole number has one as a factor. Every, um, if it's the number's even, two is one of its factors. If a number ends in a zero or a five, then five is one of its factors. And 10 lots of nine is, is 90, so nine must be. And we said, well, eight isn't, because 10 times eight is 80. So I know that, that um, another eight is 88, so that won't be one of its factors. And then we did some calculation for the others. And so we said, yeah, split 90 up into 30, 30, and 30. That, that all multiples of three. So three is a factor. We said four isn't because I split 90 into 40 and 40 and 10. Um, and 10 doesn't go into four. Uh, we said six is because I can, I can split 90 into 60 and 30. And they're both, um, six is a factor of both 60 and 30. And seven isn't because we said split 90 into 70 and 20, but seven does not go into 20. Okay, it's your turn. So single digit factors of 64, have a think. Um, which ones do you just know immediately are or aren't factors of 64? And which ones will you need to do some calculations to check? Pause the video and have a go. And if and when you're ready, let's have a look. Um, this is what I went for here. I went, well, immediately, I know one and two, they are factors of 64, uh, five can't be. Um, I said six isn't because actually 10 lots of six is 60, so 64 won't be. And seven isn't because 10 lots of seven is 70. Um, now six less than 70 is 64. So it's 63 would be, but 64 isn't. Uh, and then I was thinking, well, three, no, three isn't. And the way that I split up three was I thought 30 and 30, that is 60. 63 would be a factor, three would be a factor of 63, but not 64. Now four, that one is. Uh, a factor of 64. I split the 64 into 40 and 24. Um, and 4 again is a factor of both 40 and 24. Now 8 also is, you might just know that 8 times 8 is 64. And if you didn't, you could split 64 up into 40 and 24, just like the example before. And 8 is a factor of 40 and a factor of 24. And of course 9 isn't. Um, now you might know that seven nines are 63, a little bit like we described before, or equally you might have thought, well, what do I do? Did I, do I go up to five lots of nine, 45, and count and count up from there? But I would get to seven nines are 63, um, so nine is not a factor of 64. Well, today is called graphs and mistakes. I'm really looking forward to sharing for once someone else's mistake. Um, and also we're gonna do a recap on some of the different types of graphs that we've used. Um, we had a look at bar graphs like this one and we said percentage of trains arriving late and we said well this one would be a bar graph because we've got these distinct groups. We're measuring how, um, how likely trains were to be late at these different stations. It can't be a line graph this one, it's, it's grouped into bars. And then we had a look at my heart rate when I was running which you said changes gradually over time. So here a line graph was a, a, the appropriate form to use. And then we also had a look at why we use tally marks. Um, so here's an example, and I wonder, I wonder if you can remember this one. So Mrs. Brown is counting how many days it rains this month. Here is her tally chart so far. Why is Mrs. Brown using tally marks instead of numbers in this example? And then the second one, Mrs. Brown is counting how many children on school dinners and how many on packed lunches. Here's what she writes, and this time she uses numbers. So why is she using numbers there and not tally marks? Pause the video. What, why is she using making those choices in these examples? Okay, well, let's have a look. 
in this case here, if Mrs. Brown is counting how many days it rains this month, it's an ongoing total. So she doesn't know what the final amount will be. So each time she puts a little mark and then she'll count up the number of marks rather than using a number because I don't know what the total will eventually be. Um, whereas I don't need to use tally marks if I know there's 22 children on school dinners and eight on packed lunches because I could just count them and write the numbers in. I'm not collecting that information over a period of time. Um, and then we've had a look at interpreting bar charts as well and thinking, when is it we need just to read from one bar and when is it we need to look at different bars? So here's a question for you. The, this is the minutes of TV that Sam watched in a week. Um, and for, for the questions here, I want you to think, do I need to take just one reading? Do I need to look at more than one bar? And how do I know? So pause the video and have a go at those three questions. OK, let's have a look. So on which day did Sam watch the most TV? I think that's Saturday, just our highest bar. I don't even need to know how many minutes it was. Um, how many minutes of TV did Sam watch on Wednesday? Well, there I've got to go to Wednesday. And now the difference is I do have to take this reading. Now, I think that's evenly halfway between 20 and 40. So I think it's 30 minutes um, that Sam must have watched there. Um, less time than it takes to do a maths video. Um, how many more minutes did Sam watch on Friday than on Tuesday? Now, now, of course, we've got to do a comparison and we've got to look at Friday. And I think that is 90 minutes there if I read across from this scale um, on Friday and then go to Tuesday, 60 minutes. And I've got to look at what is this difference? That is a difference of 30 minutes. We then went to look at train timetables. Uh, so here's a train timetable traveling from Tinford down to Penfield. So this is the first train and you can see where it stops at these stations and then the second train and so on. Uh, so a couple of reminder questions for you here. Question one, how long does the second train take to get from Tinford to Garbury? And question two, I arrive at Denley station at 8.40. At what time do I arrive in Penfield? Pause the video and have a go at those two. Okay, let's have a look. So question one, how long does the second train take to get from Tinford to Garbury? So I'm looking at that second train. Um, Tinford, it goes at 7.40 and it gets to Garbury at 8.47. And so that is one hour and seven minutes. It's how long is the journey. It's not what the time is, but how long is this span of time? Question two, I arrive at Denley Station at 8.40. At what time do I arrive in Penfield? Well, here, if I arrive at Denley Station at 8.40, I've got quite a long wait here. I've, I've missed the 8.03, but I've got to wait to 9.27. It's why it's, a good, it's always good to work out when the trains are leaving uh, before you leave your house, because that's quite a long wait at the train station. Um, so what time will I arrive in Penfield? Well, I'll be in Penfield at 10.36. And the answer, of course, to this question is that time. Now, here's the mistake. Now, believe it or not, this was actually a an image that I took from a newspaper on the Internet um, and it worked out the results for the um, for this Group E in the World Cup. And one of the teams, it got the points total wrong. And actually, my daughter noticed this. So I have to give credit to her. Um, now, remember, the way that we work out the number of points that a team gets is for every match that you win, you get three points. For every match that you draw, you get one point and you don't get any matches for the uh, any points for the matches that you lose. So see if you can figure out which team did the did this newspaper get the wrong points tally for. Pause the video. You might have already seen it yesterday. Well, it was actually Brazil because you notice that Brazil won two matches. They get six points for that one. And they also drew one. So they've got another point now. They didn't get six points. They actually got seven. I found the same group table from a different place. And you notice here the points are bang on for Brazil. Seven points is how many they actually got there. Now, our final challenge is this. Now, th this was England's group in the World Cup. And there was uh, Belgium, England, Tunisia and Panama. Um, now, just a little reminder of how we work out the information here. So the points is, is calculated by you get three points for every match that you win. So the W stands for the matches that are won. You get one for the matches that are drawn and the, you get none if you lose. 
Um, and one of the little thing, which is called the, the plus or the minus, we call this the goal difference. Now, the GF stands for the goals for. So this means that, for example, Belgium scored nine goals. England scored eight goals in the matches. Tunisia, five. Panama, two. GA is goals against. So that's how many goals the other team scored. Um, now, you'll notice something, which is this plus and minus, which you call goal difference. And that is the difference between the number of goals that you score and the number of goals that you let in. So England's goal difference is plus five. They scored five more than they conceded. But Tunisia's is minus three, because actually... They, uh, the other team scored more goals against them than they scored themselves. So your challenge is this. I want you to see if you can work out what these blanks are here. So what was Belgium's goal difference? The difference between the number of goals they scored and conceded. Uh, how many points did England and Tunisia get? And what about Panama for their goal difference? Pause the video and have a go. Right, let's have a look. Well, uh, for Belgium, they won three matches. Uh, they got nine points and it was plus seven because they scored nine goals. They conceded two goals and the difference between nine and two is seven. And, and it's a positive seven because they scored more than they conceded. The points for England, well, they won two games. They had no draws, so they got six points. Tunisia, they won one game and uh, they lost two. So their points are three. And what about Panama? Well, they scored two goals. They conceded 11 goals. What's the difference between 2 and 11? It's 9, and that is, for them, the wrong direction. A minus 9 goal difference for Panama. So today's task, um, rather than having uh, task A and task B, like on some videos, I've got different types of questions for you to have a go at. So everyone, have a go at complete the graph here. Um, so there's some more information here, and you've got to complete the graph. Um, in the way that's appropriate for that question. Uh, train timetables questions. Now here on the train timetables questions, I've got two possible answers. One of them is correct and one is a likely mistake. Now, as well as finding the correct answer, can you explain the mistake that has been made with the other one? It, it's the most common wrong answer. Why might someone make that mistake? There's an extend question there if you want a bit more challenge on, on the train timetables. And then we've got a league table question from the uh, 2018 World Cup again. Um, so which team is which in the group table? You've got the results there. Fill in the gaps. Good luck with that. Um, the answers, just like normal, are at the bottom. So it's time to reveal the theme for the next fortnight. For the next fortnight, we're going to be learning all about capybaras. Hang on a minute. Someone's giving me the wrong picture. The theme for the next two weeks is fractions. Looking forward to it. I'll see you back on Monday.